I really don't know how I feel about the house. I don't know how I'm meant to feel about the house. I am a big fan of the weird and wonderful. I love anything that's creative. And that's certainly the angle at which the house is championed. This is the 2022 film and this is directed by Paloma Beza, Emma de Swaif, and Nikki Lindroth von Barr. Um, there are three segments there. And it is an anthology film, which first of all, straight away, I don't like anthology films. I don't like films that have different narratives, particularly when they're not connected. And yes, you can argue that the three stories in this are all connected around the one house, but the threads don't really tie together. They come from the same source, but they're not intertwined. And I feel like they could have done a better job with that. There are aspects of this that I think worked well. There are aspects that I think were not that great. But it is getting a lot of praise for being weird. But being weird doesn't necessarily mean good. I've watched a lot of weird things that are fantastic, that are well written, that are well directed or well shot. This is weird, but I feel like they haven't really thoroughly connected everything together. It's a bit too fragmented. Maybe if it had been a TV series and these were designed as independent episodes, perhaps I'd have a different outlook. And yes, you could argue I could watch the three segments separately, but when it's designed and released as a feature film anthology, I'm going to assume that they're meant to be linked. And they're not really very well linked apart from being set in this same house. So this is actually a stop motion animation. And I have to say that aspect of it is very well done. Not necessarily the first bit. The first segment is actually quite clunky. The movements are very slow and I found that the first segment wasn't actually very well executed. The narrative itself isn't that great. Visually, you know, the, the characters, the dolls, they have a very creepy look to them, which I think works very well. Um, this first segment is um, Unheard Within a Lie is Spun. And this family of well, like cloth dolls are um, invited to move into this new build. And, of course, the family hasn't got a lot of money. They're not very well off. So they take this opportunity to new to move into this new house um, free of charge. And weird things begin to happen. But only one, technically two of the characters, are aware of these weird things. And the house becomes a bit of a maze. Things keep moving. The, the interiors keep changing. And, of course, we're never quite fully aware of why this is. And it's meant to be peculiar, it's meant to make our heads spin, it's meant to make us, I guess, feel a bit sick at how things keep changing without explanation. I think the concept is interesting. I think the ending of this one was designed to shock, but I just found it to be a little bit underdeveloped. The second narrative is Then Lost is Truth That Can't Be Won. The narrative for this one, which I'm not going to go into any detail about, um, again, it's set in a house where things are peculiar, I didn't really care for. Um, I don't think there was anything particularly wrong with this narrative. I just didn't find it engaging. But the animation is wonderful. Unlike the previous one, which is, I believe, maybe set at the beginning of the 20th century. I'm not 100% sure. But this one is definitely a lot more contemporary. It's like a modern dollhouse. That's what it looks like. In fact, I'm assuming most of the furniture and the decor in this one does come from modern dollhouse retailers. Uh, and it, that aspect of it, I really enjoyed visually. I thought it was really beautiful. The characters um, have quite a different look to, to what they do in the first one. I think it flowed a little bit better and certainly the actual stop motion quality um, felt a bit more natural and less clunky. The third one is Listen Again and Seek the Sun. And the animals in this one are cats. Definitely made me very happy. They look very creepy. Um, but I feel like the level of detail in the set designs in this one is astounding. It really is very stunning to look at. The narrative itself, I feel like it was the most developed of the three. We have a lot more emotional... Um, character motivations here but I do feel like the ending was the ending's very different to the other two I won't say why but I feel like it was very peculiar but not really what I would have wanted from it. it made no sense I feel like the ending just 
didn't wrap anything up. It didn't give us any more questions. It didn't really want me wanting more of this kind of thing. And I feel like it felt like it was out of sync with the rest of the film. The last kind of five minutes were completely not in line with everything else. So there are good things about this and there are things that just didn't work very well and I feel like it's underdeveloped. And I think they just needed to spend more time on it making some aspects of the narratives flow better. Certain aspects of the stop motion in the first part um, a bit more pleasing and I think in general just making the weirdness make more sense because weird things can be fantastic but usually they still have to have a purpose. Something that is weird and wonderful is wonderful because there's a message that needs to be delivered and it's done well or because there's a certain vision that the artist is trying to get across and I feel like everything is just a little bit out of sync with each other here for that to work effectively. Certainly it's creative, it's very inno innovative, there are aspects of it that I thought worked very well. Also forgot to mention Helena Bonham Carter voices the character of Jen who is a cat in the third section and we do have a great voice cast, Mia Goth voices Mabel in the first section. Um, Mabel is a very likeable character. I really want to Mabel very, very quickly. So that aspect is something that worked well. I think the voice acting across the board is fine. Um, there was some slow, certainly in the first part, there's some very slow speaking. And this is obviously how the cast has been directed to speak. But I feel like it's too early. It starts off with them speaking quite slowly and that would have worked better once the weirdness and the weird changes with the house actually kicked in. But because it happened before that, there wasn't that impactful character change or this sense that they had become possessed by the house or under the house's control because they were like that from the beginning with this eerie kind of way of speaking. It just felt like part of their character rather than an effect of the house. So I don't know what to take from that. It's creative. And I will always praise anybody who does anything creative. But when you're going to put something out in the public, I feel like maybe if you're going to do it for their enjoyment, you need to maybe think about the structure of the narrative a little bit more and how things tie together. It's good. It's interesting. It's not great. I'd say it's worth a watch if you like film, if you're interested in animation. But if you are just a casual film fan who is looking for something that's enjoyable to watch and entertaining from start to finish, the house does not quite tick every box.